I think it's with it's, it's an MS patch. Um, yes, it's um, it's an MS patch that the, all of college football will be wearing um, and working with, and um, it's, it's something that's you know very close to my heart and uh, something that I know our kids are excited about doing. Or mainly the coaches, um, you know, wear, wear those on their um, sleeves, and it's something that we honor that the. Um, NCAA and college football recognizes and wants to support. Well, certainly good cause for Coach McIntyre and all the coaches. Hi again, it's uh, Mark Johnson from 850 KOA Radio and the play-by-play -play voice of the Colorado Buffaloes along with uh, Jack Harris, the senior captain and starting left tackle for the Buffs. It has been so long since the Buffs have played a game. I don't remember who you guys played last. I guess it was a victory over Central Arkansas, yeah. but you know, there's an old joke uh, back where I come from with Scandinavians. They always said they couldn't give us more than 15 minutes for a coffee break because they have to retrain us. Do, right. do you guys remember the offensive plays at this point in time? Yeah, we're actually uh, getting some more offense plays in and, uh, you know, refining a lot of stuff that we kind of, you know, we're struggling at. And uh, I think so. It's been a good little a good little camp for us. Oh, so, yeah. Well, the break, though, how do you maintain momentum? You guys are playing so well. Victory over Colorado State, victory, victory over Central Arkansas. How do you maintain your edge over the course of three weeks without playing a game? Oh, uh, we just got to practice fast, fast, fast and hard um, and go good on good a lot. And, uh, you know, I think we, we've been doing pretty well at that. Um, we just got to, you know, keep it going because you can kind of get like old sleep, like like campish kind of. And, uh, you know, we, we can't be doing that. And, uh, you know, we us as seniors and leaders need to, you know, keep us going and uh, full speed. I guess one of the good things is this is an opportunity for, for anybody after only two games that was dinged up. It's a good healing uh, period, I guess. Right. Yeah, we haven't had uh, many injuries, I don't think. But, uh, you know, I feel better and I think everyone's ready to go. So. It's been good. Yeah, without question. By the time the Buffaloes will take the field on Saturday at Reeser Stadium in Corvallis, Oregon, 21 days will have passed since their last ball game. You know, over the course of this time, obviously part of the reason has been the flooding that went on. A really amazing. We haven't had a chance to talk with you about what you guys did, kind of serving the first responders and some of the victims. Really amazing. And it make you feel good how the community and this team came together. Oh, uh, yeah, it was great. Um, you know, I saw some great things these past three weeks. Uh, some people have gone through some tough times um, to lose your home and your, your property and stuff like that. And I think a lot of the guys have really uh, reached out to the community and uh, helped them out. Jack, back to the football team, uh, how do you feel about the way this offense played through two games? There were some pretty impressive numbers you guys put up. Your thoughts? Um, you know, we, we've we've done well, but we can be better. Um, offensive line, we got some stuff working that we're working on. And, uh, you know, we need to rush the ball better. and. Uh, you know, there's always room for improvement, so that's what we're focused on. I think that there's two ways that maybe an offensive line kind of measures itself. One is if the quarterback remains upright. You guys do not have done a good job in that regard. Connor Wood has not been touched much. Yeah, yeah, uh, we kind of we did great against the issue, and then uh, Central Arkansas got to him a little bit. Um, is you know, is stuff we can completely fix. So. Um, we're working on that. Yeah. The other half would be if you're running the ball effectively. The, the offensive running numbers have not been great so far. How do you guys feel about that? Um, not good. Uh, we, we've been working on them, and uh, you know, I think I think we're going to do better. Um, we're really emphasizing that, and. Uh, you know, a lot, we, we can't forget about the pass protection, but uh, we've really been working hard on that. Comment or two about some of the other guys in this offensive line. The, the guy in the opposite end from you, Stefan Nembot. There was an interesting piece in the Denver Post the other day about him and his short time in football, uh, but he certainly is, as you well know, a physical specimen. Uh, comment or two about him. Uh, he's a great guy. Uh, he's still learning how to play, um, but he, he, he wants to win. He wants to play well, and, he you know, he wants to be appreciated and seen as a leader by his teammates. And, you know, he's, he works hard. He's, he's a very hard worker, and, you know, he's coming along. It'll take longer for him than most, you know, guys who have played football all their whole lives. And But he's coming along, so it's been good. Did you see that article I'm talking about? Yeah, my mom, you know, had me read it. You know he's royalty, right? He's a prince. That's yeah. what he's told me, but I don't know. <laughs> Do you guys have to bow down to him or anything? No, or he no? tries to make us, but, you know, we're all equals here. So. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> hey, how about getting back in the field this weekend? After 21 days off, this Oregon State team was kind of one of the Cinderella teams, if you will of the country last year ended up with uh, 10 victories uh, uh, I know you guys are chomping the bit to get back out there yeah it's, it should be a great test our first pack hole game uh, they got a, a very good defense fast um, you know and we're excited to see what we're made of you guys uh, maybe fans don't remember this but your last two road games have been or last two victories on the road have come consecutively here with the, the Utah game of the last year Washington State so going on the road and, and you know it's not that big a deal for you guys you fully understand the challenges ahead for you 
Uh, yeah, and uh, we got you know new coaches and a whole new deal and a new preparation. So uh, I think we'll do f just fine on the road. What does Mac and the staff uh, talk to you about in terms of having this much time off in between games? You know, kind of what I was saying. Uh, you just got to practice hard, uh, keep watching film. We have extra three extra weeks to watch film on these guys, and you know they play two games, so they, they don't have as much time to watch film on us. So we need to really t we hopefully we took advantage of that, and uh, you know uh, got to know. Uh, their guys as well as we could. So, did you spend some time these last couple of Saturdays watching college football? Yeah, I actually did. Uh, you know, it's it's tough sometimes because all I watch is the offensive line or the left tackle or whatever. And you know, so I, I try to get in and watch it, but it wears me out sometimes. I feel I feel like I'm watching film, you know, and critiquing them. But I, I watch some games. <laughs> you know, you're supposed to watch for fun every once in a while. Just enjoy the game. Yeah, that's why you know fantasy football. I watch <laughs> that, that way. I can watch the quarterbacks and stuff. So. Sure. Well, Jack, <laughs> good luck this weekend. Congratulations on the first couple of games. Thank you. For All sure. right, that is a senior captain and left tackle, uh, Jack Harris. The ball game again this weekend after 21 days off. The Buffs are in Corvallis, Oregon against Oregon State. We'll hit the air with our radio broadcast and flagship 850 KOA at 11:05 of the. Buffalo Stampede, 1135, our affiliates pick up, and then just after 1 o'clock, it's the Buffs and the Beavers in the Pac-12 Conference opener. Once again, I'm Mark Johnson. Remember, for all things Buffs, go to Buffs TV at cubuffs.com. And now with a little bit more from behind the scenes, let's go to B.G. Brooks. Hi, this is B.G. Brooks with cubuffs.com. Is it just me, or does it seem like the Buffs have turned back the clock and are back in training camp? I mean, by the time they open Pac-12 play on Saturday at Oregon State, it will have been three weeks since they played a game. No, it's not just me. Coach Mike McIntyre said on Monday that in his coaching career, he's never gone three weeks during the season without play. He doesn't like it, and here's why. CU had gotten off to a pretty decent start, beating Colorado State in Central Arkansas and generating momentum for its home rematch with Fresno State. Then the rains came. The creek rose in Boulder County was thrown into the national spotlight for disastrous reasons. The upshot for the Buffs, the Fresno State game was postponed two Saturdays ago, and last weekend's scheduled by left them idle for consecutive Saturdays. All McIntyre, his staff, and team can do now is keep working, just like in training camp, and wait for the action to resume. My hope is that the Buffs go to Corvallis, Oregon on Saturday, well rested, well healed, and sharply focused. Coaches talk all the time about playing the hand you're dealt, and this was a tough one. But McIntyre's team played with an edge and showed resilience in its two wins, and that's a prescription that needs to apply in game three. This is B.G. Brooks. You can read my football coverage on cubuffs.com.